up everybody on youtube max rock here with another video today is going to be a simple vlog quick discussion i wanted to talk about a device that was recently announced not too long ago from zte it's the axon 7s and i don't know about anyone else but the question for me is the axon 7s going to i guess solve the issues or the complaints that we had with the axon 7 is it going to solve those problems and you know of course i don't want to say i'm prepared but you know i got some photos here of the axon 7 i might just put this in a video i might actually do some editing and uh put the audio under this uh photo here but you know we got some photos of the axon 7s and from what I'm seeing, it looks as though the home buttons are still too close. I mean, the navigation keys are still too close. Now it's just me being petty. <laughs> I'm just kidding, y'all. But yeah, the phone does look pretty promising. Um, I actually, I'm not too mad about the specs. Um, they really did beef this phone up even more. Um, I'm actually expecting it to be at 450 to 500. Um, it may be some rumors out there as far as what the price is going to look like, but I would definitely guess 450 to 500. Um, and that's still a really good price based on the specifications here. So anyway, let's talk about the specs. So obviously you got the ZTE Axon 7S. I might just leave it all in one video here instead of editing. Axon 7S here, as you can see. Boom, the focus isn't that good in the front camera. But Axon 7S, you got a 5.5 inch, 1440 by 2560 screen. So you still get 2K screen. I think it's AMOLED. We'll see. Um, you still get the same 20 megapixel sensor that's on the back of this phone here, the Axon 7, along with a 12 megapixel uh, camera as well. So you get two cameras, dual cameras. I think, I think one is wide, we'll see. You get six gigabytes of RAM. That is impressive. With a Snapdragon 821. We may get some criticism from some uh, fans out there that they wanted a 635, but I mean, I mean, six gigs of RAM and an 830, I mean, an 821 is still pretty good in my opinion. I'm not gonna complain about that. Uh, you get a 3,400 milliamp hour battery. So the battery does improve. You get a bigger battery, slightly bigger, so you should be able to squeeze another hour out of that, maybe. Uh, it says this to be coming uh, definitely sometime during May. You don't know for sure until it actually comes out. Um, but, okay, it says here it's going to be an AMOLED screen. 73.3% um, screen to body ratio. That's pretty good. Uh, I'm not sure if... Is that a little bit bigger than what the um, Axon 7S had? I don't know, but 70 over 70% in my opinion is good. And as far as the pixels, you get 534, same as this one here. And you get uh, the Mi Favor UI 4.0. You get Android New It 7.0, which I'm willing to bet that you may be getting 7.1.1 out of the box. If not out the box, you'll be able to upgrade to it because my Axon 7 here has 7.1.1. So I'm pretty sure you're gonna be able to get the latest uh, version of Android that they uh, that they have to offer. Um, tip set, like I said, is the A21. You get the Adreno 530. You get the micro SD card slot. Okay, so you got two slots, one for SIM, one for uh, micro SD card. And uh, the internal is 120 gigabytes. So another reason why I think the phone is gonna be 450 to 500. As far as the internal storage, you get 128 gigs. I'm not even sure they're gonna make a 64 gig model. It says you get a, the internal storage is gonna be 128 gig. That's gonna be insane. That's gonna be crazy. And in case you didn't know, the dual, the the actual 20 megapixel camera in the back is a 1.8 aperture, and um, it's gonna have dual LED flash. And let's see, the front camera is eight megapixels. Obviously, you can shoot 4K video with the rear camera. Um, it's going to have Bluetooth 4.2, so no Bluetooth 5.0, uh, USB Type-C, 
which is expected. You get a fingerprint scanner, of course. Um, as far as the sensors, accelerometer, gyro, proximity, compass. Um, and the color's gonna be gold so far. Pretty sure you're gonna get other colors in the future, but yeah, so right now, as far as the micro SD card slot, 256, so pretty much maxed out. So yeah, overall, as far as those specs, I'm pretty satisfied only because you not only get an upgrade in the CPU, you get an upgrade in RAM, excuse me, uh, along with an upgrade in storage. You get a dual camera. You still get the same high quality screen. You get a bigger battery. Pretty sure you still get those dual speakers. Absolutely, yeah, you get those dual speakers. You have to get those dual speakers. I, I wouldn't expect them to just get rid of them. That would that, just be a bummer. Uh, you get quick charge 3.0. So yeah, as far as the phone, the, the specs of it, I'm absolutely a fan of. I'm pretty excited about that. Um, but the design, it's not that the design is a killer for me. It's just that um, I just really wish the navigation keys were a little bit more, um, more apart. Or a little bit more spread out, let's just say. Uh, maybe I'm being extremely picky with this, but when you rather have the spit the buttons to be a little bit more further, like a little further apart, mm, they're too close. Am I still gonna get this phone? Probably. I may end up keeping the seven and getting a seven S as well to do a side by side comparison. So yeah, as far as the phone itself and the specs, absolutely a fan of. Um, Am I, not, am I not gonna buy because of the buttons still being too close? Nah, I'm just being petty about it. So yeah, I'm excited about the Axon 7S. Uh, I think you should be too. Um, just curious to see the pricing. If this pricing is like 399 again, <sighs> it's crazy, it's crazy. But you know, 120 gigabytes internal storage, six gigs of RAM, 821. We're looking at at least 450 in my opinion. With a 2K screen, yeah, we're looking at 450. But um, as far as the LG here, you know, LG has a phone coming out pretty soon too. I would get to the Max XL, but I still haven't got my hands on one. Um, so I don't really want to talk about it too much more. Um, I am looking for a big phone right now, like a six inch phone. So I was looking at the, uh, the blue uh, Life XL. Is that what it is? Life, no matter of fact, instead of me, me trying to figure it and think of it, Maybe just go to Amazon and look it up really quick. So yeah, it's this phone that Blue has a, I know it came out a while ago, but it's a six inch phone that Blue released, but the uh, the phone itself has a uh, 4,900 milliamp hour battery. And they're only X in 129. You can see that there. Look how big the battery is. Six inches too. Everything that I'm looking for on the phone right now, but it's blue. You know what I mean? Like, it, you know, you don't want to put a company down, but it's called a Studio XL, by the way. Studio XL too. You don't want to put a company down, but as far as software updates, and I'm one of those people where software updates really do matter because you get used to certain features in a, in a, um, in a particular version of a software. And so when you have to go back to like a 6.0 or 6.0.1, you start mentioning certain features in the latest update if you if you experience it. So like for example, notification direct apply, um, multitasking. Um, what else is in NuGet? Uh, I don't want to say Google Assistant because Google Assistant I was actually running it on my I'm running it on my J7. It works perfectly fine. So I think it's, I think Google Assistant is more is more uh, email based really. You know, getting it out to all the users, but um, yeah, I'm really looking at the Blue Studio XL. I'm thinking about bringing that in. I want to get the white and gold version, but the only thing that's stopping me is just those software updates, man. I really, I really like my software updates. So, yeah, but I still want a six-inch phone. So, the Max XL is a six-inch phone that has nougat, but I'm on Cricut, and I kind of want to keep it that way. And if I get a phone like the Max XL, I'm gonna to wanna to use it, the text and everything. And I wanna be able to do that without having to activate a line on Boost, which means a new number. I could port my number over, but Cricut has the unlimited data. That's capped at eight gigabytes, but 
you know, as far as the ability to just have a SIM card and switch it over to one of your other unlocked phones, having a Boost Mobile line, you can't do that. You just can't. So that's what stops me there. But anyway, since we're talking about Boost Mobile, let me go ahead and uh, discuss the LG X Power 2, which is supposed to be coming out on Boost Mobile pretty soon. It's the X Power 2. The second uh, model of the uh, one that came out, what, last year, the X-Power with the 41, it was a 4100 milliamp hour battery? Yeah, it was 4100. So this year's model has a uh, 4500 milliamp hour battery. So as far as the impressive battery life that we know for the first one to have, the second one is probably gonna be that much better. Can't get mad at that. On the original one, you had a 5.2 inch screen that was 720, but now you got a 5.5 inch screen. You lose a little bit, use the, you lose a few pixels, but still, 5.5 inch, not that bad. You get a camera upgrade, you get a 13 megapixel camera that shoots 1080p, so you do get an upgrade in the camera as far as the megapixels. You get two gigs of RAM, the MediaTek 6750. I'm not sure if that's an upgrade, because I know I know the last one ran the MediaTek, um, which one was it? I don't remember the exact model number, but it was a, it was an octa-core 1.8 gigahertz. So we're gonna look into that, see what this um, says about the CPU down here. So, supposed to be released June is what they're saying, at least the expected release date here. I thought it was gonna be in the next couple of weeks here. So the Pixel, you get 267 Pixel, uh, so Pixel Density PPI. 69% screen to body ratio. So, you know, it's not 70%, so it means you're gonna have a pretty, you know, it's gonna be some pretty big bezels on this phone. But if you're one of the people who don't care about bezels, then you're fine. But as far as the OS, you get 7.0 Nougat, so you get 7.0, you get Nougat. You get the MediaTek, like I said, 6750, and that's an octa-core clocked at 1.5 gigahertz. So not too bad, it's pretty good. And then you get the T860, as far as the GPU for the Mali. It's a Mali GPU. Um, so apparently it shows 1.5 gig of RAMs and two gigs of RAM. So it's gonna be two different models that have different uh, amounts of RAM, but the same internal storage at 16 gigabytes. And you do get the option to upgrade to a 256 gigabyte, not upgrade, but uh, expanded storage to 256 gigs. So that's cool. So as far as the camera, it's a 13 megapixel autofocus LED flash, um, face detection, touch to focus, HDR, it probably has the same sensor as the Stylo 2, and it probably has the same uh, front-facing sensor as the Stylo 2, or Stylo 3, excuse me, Stylo 3. But uh, I say the major difference between the X Power and the Stylo 3 is literally gonna be, for the one word that's in the name, power, it's gonna have a bigger battery, and it's gonna be able to last longer and plus the screen is smaller. So with a smaller screen at 720, but a bigger battery is gonna have a better battery life off the rip, being that it's bigger and the screen is smaller. But um, yeah, we're gonna see about that phone. I wonder what they're gonna price it at. That should be quite interesting as well. Um, see what they price it at. But I might end up checking that out. I see that they have the unlocked version of the LG X Power 2. Um, I've seen it at prices for about 150 at Best Buy, but I just haven't really pulled the trigger on it. I do really want an LG unlock phone because I don't have an unlock phone for LG. Matter of fact, I never owned an unlock phone for LG as far as, uh... wait, now I'm thinking about it. No, I haven't. I had, I've owned plenty of LG devices. I had the G3. Um, I had a phone. Um, I had the Tribute, LG Tribute. I had the, um, I had a, I had a couple of Optimus phones from LG. Um, Optimus was really like almost their flagship before they actually started changing it to G, just dropping the Optimus name. Cause I think it was the Optimus G at one point, then it just started coming out with the G2 and that's when all that happened. But um, I never had an unlocked LG device. So what the plan was this year, and I don't know if I, I don't know if I remember exactly, but I was gonna try to bring in a lot of HTC devices um, and a lot of LG devices. But the thing about HTC is that the unlock phones that I've seen, I mean, I would get them, but I kind of want HTC to drop something like in the middle of the road for like, you know, the 250 to 300 range. And as far as the U Ultra, I just, it's a nice looking phone, don't get me wrong, but I, I don't want to spend $800 on a for a phone with the A21 and because it was ETE dropping a phone with the A21, it's like, 
I just wait for that one. So, yeah, so eh, HTC, give us something with the 660. Wait, what is it? The 660 Snapdragon, I think this was announced, and the 630. Is it the 660 and the 630? I believe so. It's an upgrade from the 652 and the 627, I think. So, yeah, anyway. That's going to be the it for this vlog here. So if you guys have any questions, go ahead and ask them to me in the comments. Um, anything about the Axon 7S, you know, what you think it's going to be. Um, and also, another question before you guys go. As far as you getting a phone, when you get ready to buy a new phone, what's the process that you go through before actually spending money on a device that you want? I know for me, I had to do a ton of research. You know, I'm not one of those people who are deterred or, you know, giving or uh, uh, take take what someone says about a device the wrong way or you know get rubbed the wrong way by what someone has to say about a certain device i'm super curious like as far as like when it comes to new phones or having a, seen a device that you never thought you would look at or seeing a device that you never thought you would want to own i'm just too curious as a person to actually be like you know what because i've seen this review I don't want the phone anymore. It kind of it kind of ruined everything for me. I'm not one of those people. When I look to get a new phone, I do a ton of research on it because I like to see what people you know think about a phone before I actually you know go and buy it. Because I know entirely how I'm going to feel about it is going to be different from what they feel about it because no two minds are alike. So that's just my opinion. So when you get a new phone, what's your process you go through? If you have any questions about the topics I discuss in this video here, go ahead and let me know in the comments. But as you guys do know, my name is Max The Rock. I want to say a curse. Thank you for watching this video. And you guys have a good day. Peace.